Welcome to This Is My Architecture. I'm Aarti from AWS, and joining me in New York today is James from Gizio. Thank you, James, for joining us today. Thank you for having me. Before we jump right into the architecture, tell us what does Gizio do? Well, Gizio processes uh, financial transactions for over 500 financial institutions. That's a lot of financial institutions, and I'm sure processing all the data from these financial institutions could be a challenging architecture. Absolutely. A number of our enterprise customers would love to hear how you've architected your solution. Why don't we start with how data comes in and what's happening here? Sure. So all the way over here, we store users and accounts for these financial institutions. And uh, on a daily basis, we go ahead and we need to get those financial, um, financial transactions. So we've got over here a Harvest Manager that basically calls up all of the active users and accounts, pulls them in, and stores them into an elastic cache, Redish. And then um, all of this stuff is backed by CloudWatch. So we're able to keep an eye on that Redis to see where we're at in the queue. And when we hit a certain size, a certain number of them, it'll trigger off uh, using CloudFormation, an auto-scaling group. I like how you're using cloud formation to automate this instead of having manual services here. It makes it so much easier. Before we move into the auto scaling part here, how are you handling HA for these EC2 instances? I'm assuming it's not a single EC2 instance for your harvest manager and user account, user and accounts. Yeah, correct. So over here, we are rolling our own MySQL in a primary secondary setup. And then over here for our harvest managers, we're running multiple uh, across availability zones and um, regions. OK. So what's the threshold that you've set for this CloudWatch alarm to trigger? Uh, at current, it's around uh, 50,000 transactions, financial transactions. And that's a little bit of an arbitrary number. We maintain a minimum amount of infrastructure sort of idle chewing along during the given day. But when we do that sort of daily harvest, it's a lot of data that we need to go through. So when we trigger it that, um, we have several thresholds that'll happen where we'll balloon up increasingly larger clusters of transaction servers. So this auto scaling then triggers a bunch of EC2 instances yep. to spin up. Exactly. And then all of those talk out to the financial institutions over here to get that data. Getting all these data from these financial institutions, security is very important. How are you getting that data from the financial institutions? So we'll get it uh, several different ways. Um, some of it's over the public internet using SSL. Some of it is direct connections to uh, those financial institutions. And in that case, we have to stand up VPN tunnels to their data centers. And what do you use for these VPN connections? Is it the AWS managed VPN or a partner solution? So we do use a partner solution. It's uh, cohesive, and it's their VNS3 product. I've used VNS3 personally when I'm like setting up trial VPN connection. It's an amazing solution. So once data is received by your transaction service, what happens? So it actually gets fed over to here. And we'll scribble through all these lines down to the Kinesis. And so we basically push all those into Kinesis stream. And then we have a persistence manager down here. So the most important thing to us is to be able to save that data when we get it. Mm -hmm. So even before we might do any enrichment work, we want to make sure that we've got it. So this guy grabs it and does an upsert over into our DynamoDB tables. OK. I also see an SFTP server here. This makes sense. You process the data, then you persist it into a DynamoDB table. What's API Gateway doing here? So of one of the three ways that we get it, um, some of our larger partners prefer to give us flat files. Okay. It's easier for them to manage that, uh, their workload on their side. So they drop it onto an SFTP server, and we've got some processes there that kick off using API Gateway and Lambda to basically scatter that data and push it into the Kinesis stream as well. And then again, it's persisted and then yep, the persistence moved into manager. DynamoDB table. Yep, we'll store it there. And then what will happen here is we have a fleet of servers um, that works much the same as the transaction servers and auto-scaling groups that does all of the enrichment work and they write it back to the Kinesis stream. And so that enrichment work is normalizing those transactions and categorizing those transactions. And then the persistence manager, again, writes an upsert to the DynamoDB tables. OK, makes sense. So once data is finally inside the DynamoDB table, if I were the end user using a banking application, how would I see this data? Like, are there, uh, is there 
customized budgets or a few things that I can do? Or from an end user perspective, how is this seen? Yep. So one of our main uh, product focuses is for the end user themselves to be able to set up budgets, goals, and alerts, and be able to interact with their financial life um, through our application. And then behind that, we're also doing analytics um, on that data for those financial institutions to be able to identify opportunities such as loans. I'm sure this DynamoDB tables that I see here gets hit with like tons of transactions. Have a range of like the number of transactions that you're seeing on the DynamoDB tables? So we're averaging on a daily basis around 15 million transactions a day out of all of these institutions and we're sitting on terabytes of data uh, over the course of our lifetime at this point. What was there before Dynamo, or did you start with Dynamo in your architecture? No, since we've been at this for 11 years, we've sort of evolved um, pace with uh, Amazon. And so before this, we actually had it in uh, MySQL, and we outgrew that quite quickly. And just before Dynamo was released, we were actually evaluating React and Mongo, oh. and Dynamo saved uh, the day. <laughs> That's awesome. Our Dynamo team will be glad to hear how well Dynamo is working for you. This is an interesting architecture for customers who are looking to do data processing for larger financial transactions. Thank you for joining us today, James, and thank you for watching This Is My Architecture.